uh, in elsewhere. Uh, but in the long run, we strongly believe that it's better to build local capacity to train local forces, as we have done in the Balkans, uh, uh, as we do in Iraq, uh, and also as we have done in, in Afghanistan. But the big question we have to ask in an honest and, uh, and a clear-eyed way is uh, why uh, didn't the forces we trained and equipped and supported over so many years why were they not able to uh, stand up against the Taliban in the stronger and better way than they did? We, we were always aware of the risks that uh, uh, Taliban could regain control. That was stated clearly uh, when we made the decision to end our military uh, presence. But it was a surprise, the speed of the collapse and how swiftly that uh, happened. So, uh, uh, international terrorism remains a challenge and a threat in many places in the world. Therefore, NATO ne needs to stay vigilant, to stay uh, at the forefront of the fight against international terrorism. But there are lessons uh, that need to be learned from Afghanistan, and uh, uh, we will do that. But the main focus today is to get people out of uh, Afghanistan, of, uh, out from the airport, and then we will draw the lessons and examine uh, 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 the lessons learned uh, after the evacuations has, has been finalized. Lailu Masadid from Brussels Morning. Thanks, please. Thank you very much, Secretary General, for the statement. I would like to ask, especially about NATO rule in Afghanistan. NATO is not only US. Don't you think that decision that you or NATO took, it was wrong. How, you do, how do you respond for that? And how many more failed policy will be followed before a workable one will, will be implemented and uh, planned? Because when we saw the situation as an Afghan woman and like a normal Afghan citizen, you see the situation is really tough. And there is thousands of women who really don't know for the future what is going on and what should happen for them. And they are always asking, what does it mean 20 years? NATO with the, all the international community is inside in Afghanistan and then we are going back again 20 years after we were on that place. And I would like to ask how that possible the US and EU with the top of civilization in the world of beaten Nazism, fascism, and imperialism. But after the Second World War and NATO and European Union with the, all this big intelligence, and they are not able to defend for the, only a group of Taliban and then you are doing everything again, put us 20 years after. And how do you see the future? And I would like to ask as a woman, please don't recognize the Emirate Islamic Taliban without any condition like the, the agreement which is signed between Taliban and the government of Trump and then all NATO is following that. Please don't recognize the Taliban and don't put us again the same situation. Thank you very much. It was extremely difficult to make the decision to end the NATO military presence uh, in Afghanistan. And it was difficult because I share your pain. I understand your frustration. Uh, I was Prime Minister in Norway back in 2001 when we decided to send uh, the troops uh, for the first time uh, to Afghanistan. And uh, now I'm Secretary General uh, of NATO, uh, responsible for uh, our presence there and the ending uh, of our military uh, mission. Uh, uh, and over these years, I've been many times in Afghanistan. I met people. I met uh, not least a lot of uh, women uh, standing out as strong leaders uh, um, with a strong voice. Uh, and I've seen the social and economic progress you have been able to make in Afghanistan over these uh, years. And therefore, we will continue to support, we will continue to watch, and we will continue to hold the new rulers accountable for living up to fundamental human rights, including, of course, the rights of women. And uh, uh, 
it is it is a tragedy uh, what we now see uh, taking place uh, in Afghanistan. Um, at the same time, uh, there has been gains, and we all need to make all efforts to try to preserve those gains, uh, including the fact that. Uh, generations of uh, men and uh, women, but in particular women, are now educated, are now taking part of, uh, in political processes, and uh, it will not be easy for uh, new rulers to uh, remove, uh, to take away all those gains. So, um, I, I understand uh, the anger, uh, but I also have the responsibility uh, to convey the message that uh, the plan, the intent, was never to stay in Afghanistan forever. The, the plan was to build an Afghan state, an Afghan security force, uh, to take responsibility for the future of Afghanistan. And, uh, and the tragedy was that after 20 years, uh, we saw a very sudden collapse of Afghan leadership, politically and militarily, that led to the um, advances of uh, Taliban. Mustafa Sawa from uh, Radio Free Europe Diary section, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary uh, General. Um, which NATO countries uh, uh, specifically are involved in the evacuation efforts of Afghans who are at risk? And um, the airport issues aside, uh, what uh, are they planning to do uh, to get those Afghans uh, out? And uh, my second question is, uh, what's your message to the Taliban uh, now that uh, they are in control of Kabul? Thank you very much. NATO's main focus now is to get people out. Um, of course, our own staff. Um, but we'll remain, but we retain some uh, critical uh, staff at the airport to be able to run the airport, air traffic control, uh, fuel, and so on. Um, uh, to get our own staff out, uh, uh, to get uh, staff from NATO allied countries out, uh, people who have worked for NATO, but also Afghans who have worked and supported uh, NATO and NATO allies over all these years. And we are working hard on that 24 7. And, uh, and uh, we have already seen that. Uh, uh, some uh, diplomatic staff, but also some uh, locally employed Afghans, uh, have been evacuated out of Afghanistan. Uh, we are working to speed that up, to get more planes in and more planes out with, uh, uh, with people uh, uh, leaving. Um, then some NATO allies have also stated that uh, uh, they uh, will not only focus on and provide support to those Afghans who have worked for us, over all these years, but also other um, uh, uh, Afghans who are vulnerable uh, or in a difficult uh, uh, position. Uh, we have seen public announcements by several NATO uh, allies, uh, but the precondition for getting also these uh, uh, other Afghans out is, of course, to have uh, the airport up and running. And, uh, and we have now many NATO allies uh, uh, helping to ensure exactly that. We have the United States, they are deploying more troops to secure the airport. We have Turkey, who has been at the airport for many, many years. Uh, we have Norway running the hospital at the airport. Uh, we have the United Kingdom and uh, other allies are also uh, helping and supporting. And during the meeting of the North Atlantic Council today, several allies announced that they are sending in airplanes uh, to the region to be able to build a bridge, uh, air bridge to get uh, people uh, out. Uh, so, there is a huge effort by many allies uh, to keep uh, the airport open and to help to evacuate. And uh, several allies also announced that they are ready to support and also provide a, a resettlement of other uh, um, uh, vulnerable uh, Afghans. For the next question, we'll go to Politico and David Hersenson. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Secretary General. I wanted to ask you about the scale and scope of the current operations, but you mentioned uh, first the fact that this was all allies making a decision uh, to follow the US. And I wonder, normally when you talk about, we talk about a tragedy, it's something like a natural disaster, a calamity, something that couldn't be prevented, where this is a consequence of a clear policy decision. And I wonder if you, 
view this as an American failure, the decision to pull out and the inability to predict how quickly uh, the country would collapse politically and militarily? Or do you view this as a failure of all allies in not insisting, and for you personally, insisting on a conditions-based withdrawal, which is what you had talked about for quite a long time before Joe Biden took office and then revisited uh, Donald Trump's uh, agreement and decision? This, has, this is first and foremost a tragedy for the Afghan people uh, who have uh, seen gradually progress towards democracy, uh, freedom uh, over uh, decades uh, and made uh, enormous social and economic uh, uh, progress. Um, so it's a tragedy for them. Uh, but of course also for, for, uh, for NATO personnel, uh, servicemen and women who have served in Afghanistan and, uh, and, uh, and paid the high price uh, over many uh, uh, years. Um, for many years we had a conditions-based uh, uh, presence. Uh, then in uh, February last year the United States uh, signed an agreement with Taliban uh, uh, and agreed to end uh, the military presence by May. And, um, and uh, um, allies welcomed that agreement. And after extensive consultations uh, uh, with the new uh, Biden administration uh, this spring, this winter, uh, all allies agreed uh, that the time had come uh, to end uh, the military uh, presence, the NATO presence in Afghanistan. Knowing that there were risks, knowing that uh, uh, there was a possibility that uh, the Taliban was going to regain control over the country. But allies took that risk uh, uh, with open eyes, clear-eyed, uh, because they knew that the alternative was not to continue with a limited military presence. The alternative was most likely to continue uh, with an increased presence of NATO troops and forces and to once again engage in combat because since the negotiations, since the deal was, was signed, NATO troops, uh, US troops were, were not attacked by Taliban. We could not uh, uh, anticipate that that would continue. So the alternative was either more fighting, more troops, more combat, and an open-ended NATO military presence, or to leave and then, uh, 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 of course, uh, hope that the, all the investments we had made in the Afghan security forces, the Afghan, Afghan government, not only NATO, but the whole international community with development aid, with reform programs for the Afghan government, that all of that from the European Union, from NATO, from the UN, from many countries all over the world, that that, that, would, have, that, that would prove uh, sustainable and viable, uh, meaning that the uh, Afghan government, the Afghan state structure, the Afghan security forces, were able to withstand the pressure from uh, Taliban. That didn't happen. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we saw the risks, we anticipated uh, uh, the challenges, but uh, uh, no one anticipated the speed of the collapse of the Afghan uh, security forces, the Afghan government and the Afghan state uh, structures. Um, the choice then to turn the country over to the Taliban rather than risk the, the continued endless mission, the continued endless fighting. That was the choice. The choice was to choose between two very difficult alternatives with the risks and downsides uh, connected to both of them. Either, as we stated when we made the decision, the risk of uh, Taliban returning uh, or the risk of uh, uh, more decades, many more years in Afghanistan uh, um, uh, trying to build an Afghan uh, state and Afghan security forces. Um, and, and this is an effort not only by NATO, but by the whole international community. And the frustration is easy to understand when we see that so many years of efforts by the whole international community uh, prove, have prove, uh, proven so, uh, uh, also has not given better and stronger results um, when it comes to the strength of the Afghan state structures. At the same time, some of the gains uh, will be hard to reverse. The fact that millions of young girls and, and boys have got education is an achievement that is lasting. The fact that we have uh, more independent, stronger political voices in Afghanistan now are gains that are not easily reversed. And it's uh, our responsibility of all of us to, to do whatever we can to 
uh, uh, support the Afghans in trying to maintain those gains. But also, there is no doubt that this was difficult. Uh, it was a difficult decision between difficult alternatives. And, uh, and uh, we have seen uh, the consequences of a difficult decision made by 30 allies together uh, when we decided to end the military mission. We'll now go to Terry Schultz from NPR. Hi, thank you. Um, Mr. Secretary General, you and I have spoken many, many times over the last years about the situation of girls, and you just heard from, from Layla. Um, but I'm also talking to people there about the journalists, the, some of the women journalists who are empowered there, and they're now hiding in their houses and they can't go out. Um, how did this suddenly not become a priority anymore? And having, having some education is not going to save them now. And you and uh, how does NATO plan to continue supporting them? Something that you've said consistently, NATO will continue supporting civilians. What can you do? What can you do? Where are you sending money? I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand how this planning, planning for all contingencies that you mentioned um, will play out now. Thank you. Well, the most uh, important and the most uh, immediate thing we are doing is uh, to keep the airport open, to help uh, uh, people evacuate, uh, leave Afghanistan, and uh, we send a clear message uh, to the new rulers that they need to allow people to leave, and we are helping uh, people to leave. Uh, of course, not only our own staff, but also Afghans who have worked for us, and several allies have also stated very clearly that they're ready also to help and support and provide asylum uh, to uh, uh, other uh, Afghans who are uh, in an exposed and dangerous uh, position. Uh, and to be able to get these people out, we need uh, 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 the airport uh, up and running. And that's exactly what we have been working on 24-7 for now several days uh, with NATO allies, uh, with uh, uh, NATO staff uh, working at the airport, uh, running the airport, providing uh, critical services. And, and, and then uh, we're also trying to help people to get to the airport and, uh, and to get them out. So. So the, the precondition for any support, uh, or at least help people out, is that we are successful in the big task it is now to make sure that uh, uh, we have a functional uh, airport, an operational airport. And I welcome the fact that allies have clearly stated today that they are sending in more planes, and also that uh, uh, we see that the operations, uh, the, the, the flights in and out from the airport are gradually resuming uh, as we speak. I'm sorry, but do you mean on, on the long term you're keeping the airport open or for a few days until you get your own people out? As I understand it, it's just for a few days for evacuation flights for those people that NATO, uh, NATO and allies are helping to get out. Also, you don't plan on any long term ma maintenance of the airport, do you? Also, I will not speculate about exactly how long, uh, but uh, the thing is that we will try to evacuate as many people as possible. Uh, and uh, we have it stated clearly again and again that uh, all those who want to leave should be allowed to leave uh, by uh, uh, air, airplanes or on by land and open border crossings. They are not open now, but we will continue to work for uh, opening of the border crossings. Next question will be from Thomas Gutschke from Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Um, Secretary General, two questions. Um, the first one, um, what will happen uh, to the Afghan National Army Trust Fund. NATO had committed to continue funding for the Afghan Army until 2024. Um, um, will these payments now be frozen or stopped? Have you discussed that uh, in the neck? And what is your recommendation? And the second question: um, uh, In past days, you can, uh, UK Defense Minister Ben Wallace has said in a number of interviews that he had consulted with allies whether a stabilization force could be um, uh, could remain in Afghanistan even without US uh, involvement. Um, have you been involved in these consultations? And do you think at any point it could have been possible to stay in Afghanistan without US troops? Thank you. First, we have, of course, uh, suspended all support, uh, financial and other kinds of support, to the Afghan government because there's no Afghan government for NATO to support. Uh, so all that is frozen and suspended. 
uh, and we will come back to how we will then um, uh, uh, also the, the Afghan the trust fund for the Afghan army uh, that's something we can solve later but no money is transferred no support is provided uh, to uh, to Kabul uh, uh, after uh, the collapse of the uh, government um, uh, so I have seen reports uh, about uh, attempts to try to establish a, a kind of coalition of the willing um, um, uh, uh, to replace NATO uh, and the U.S. presence in in Afghanistan. I have not. I read that in the newspapers. Uh, I have not been part of any uh, consultations uh, in NATO about that. Uh, uh, but I think it reflects the reality that. Uh, uh, when the United States decided uh, to end its uh, presence in Afghanistan, uh, and uh, of course Afghan NATO, the United States has, has has been responsible for the majority of the soldiers and 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 has uh, carried the brunt of the burden all the way, um, uh, uh, there were no uh, uh, willingness uh, from uh, other European allies, Canada, uh, other partner nations, to uh, replace or to fill in. Uh, uh, of the United States, uh, so uh, so uh, uh, that's that's uh, that's that that this is also reflected in the fact that uh, after an extensive cons consultation, several ministerial meetings, uh, many meetings at the ambassador level uh, in uh, in 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 February, March, uh, and uh, and April, uh, we decided uh, together, 30 allies, that we would uh, end the mission. We have said many times that we went into Afghanistan together, we adjusted our presence together and we uh, uh, left together. And 30 allies agreed on this decision and, uh, and, uh, and that is uh, also now reflected in the fact that all allies uh, uh, um, yeah, um, were part of that decision when we made it in NATO. The next question uh, will go to NRK, Philip uh, Bedos Ulven. Good afternoon, Mr. Secretary General. Um, does NATO consider it probable that terrorist groups like Al Qaeda will return now to Afghanistan in full force after the Taliban takeover? And what kind of assurances has the alliance gotten from uh, the Taliban that this will not be the case? <clears throat> the agreement uh, that uh, the United States um, uh, made with the uh, Taliban uh, last year in February 2020 uh, was an agreement that uh, the United States uh, agreed to end its military presence in Afghanistan and uh, NATO allies agreed to that and, uh, and, and followed the US decision. But at the same time, um, uh, Taliban agreed uh, to make sure that uh, Afghanistan not uh, once again becomes a platform for international terrorists to organize, plan, uh, terrorist attacks against uh, NATO allied uh, countries. And of course, we expect Taliban to live up to those commitments. And uh, uh, we also uh, uh, will follow and watch that very closely. And NATO allies uh, will remain vigilant and we have the capabilities uh, to strike terrorist groups from distance uh, if we see uh, that uh, terrorist groups again try to establish themselves and plan, organize uh, attacks against the NATO allied uh, countries. Uh, we have seen that uh, NATO allies have those capabilities uh, and they are also, of course, available uh, to be used uh, in Afghanistan uh, if needed, uh, uh, strike against the terrorist groups uh, from uh, uh, distance. Um, we see a tragedy unfolding. Uh, we, uh, we, 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 we see the sadness and uh, and uh, and uh, and. Uh, uh, and the pain that uh, Afghans uh, suffer. Uh, but one of the achievements we have made over these uh, 20 years is actually that uh, we have been able to uh, really um, fight and, and, and destroy uh, terrorist groups in, uh, in Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda is, 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 uh, is hardly existing. It's much weaker today than it was when we started our military operation. And, uh, and uh, therefore, the main purpose of NATO going into Afghanistan was to make sure that we, uh, that the country was not uh, a platform for international terrorists, and uh, and uh, the NATO presence, uh, together with uh, with partner countries, uh, has been extremely important in achieving exactly that. Uh, Marcus Price, next from uh, IRD, please. 
Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, many European leaders uh, are worried that the events in Afghanistan might lead to a new flow of uh, refugees. And my question is, in this case, do you think the U.S. has a moral uh, obligation to accommodate refugees on their own soil, or is it only a problem for the Europeans and Turkey? Thank you. <clears throat> well, all uh, allies, including all the European allies, uh, we all made the decision together, uh, knowing that there were risks, and also knowing that uh, uh, without the United States, there were no, no, no willingness from uh, from all, from other allies to to fill in and to replace the United States uh, capabilities uh, in our mission in uh, in Afghanistan, and I understand that also because uh, the the NATO mission in Afghanistan was triggered by an attack on the United States. Uh, so partly because the United States has all these capabilities, and partly because the whole operation was uh, triggered by an attack on the United States. Of course, the United States decided to end its presence. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, natural also for all the NATO allies uh, to uh, do the same to end their military presence uh, in uh, in Afghanistan. We will continue to work for a stable Afghanistan uh, for many reasons, uh, but also to prevent uh, a flow of refugees from Afghanistan uh, to, uh, to to Europe and to other countries. Um, the United States have uh, clearly stated that they are ready to take uh, on and, 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 and to receive and to resettle Afghans who have worked for them uh, uh, over these uh, years, uh, but we all need to make an effort to uh, avoid or prevent uh, a new flow of uh, refugees, uh, migrants coming from uh, Afghanistan. For the next question, we'll go to VG and uh, Alf Bjarne Jonsson. No. Thanks, uh, Mr. Secretary General. I would like to take you back to the two months back to the NATO summit in June, where there was a clear commitment uh, combined to the withdrawal of the forces to stand with the Afghan people, not mentioning uh, which uh, party that would rule in Kabul to continue to provide training and financing of security forces, and uh, not at least to safeguard the human rights for particularly women, children, and minorities. Uh, so is it possible in this situation to stand firm on these promises? And uh, how, will, how do you see the, the view uh, on, and the future of the commitments that the leaders gave in, 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 in June? Thank you. The situation in Afghanistan is evolving, and therefore it's a bit hard to predict exactly uh, what kind of situation and also what kind of government uh, we will have in Afghanistan uh, in the future. Uh, there are efforts to try to establish some kind of inclusive government. Uh, uh, many international actors have called for that. And of course, if that happens, it will be easier to, to have some kind of relationship uh, uh, compared to if we have a, a, a Taliban rule, which uh, is something similar to what we saw 20 years ago. So uh, first of all, I think uh, the important thing is to try to convey a clear message that we need a peaceful transition of power, transfer of power, and uh, we need an inclusive uh, government in uh, in Afghanistan, respecting fundamental uh, human uh, rights. Um, uh, NATO has ended its military presence, but of course the international community uh, can, and also NATO can continue uh, to play a role, uh, development aid, uh, and, uh, different uh, non-governmental organizations, they are playing an important role in Afghanistan, as they've done over many years. They will uh, hopefully be able to continue to play that, uh, that role. Uh, to, to, to provide humanitarian aid, development aid, and also to uh, pro uh, protect and support human rights. So uh, the military presence was and is important, but the broader efforts of the international community, they may continue, uh, of course, depending a bit on, on the developments in, uh, uh, in Afghanistan. And, and the message from the NATO summit, from the NATO leaders, was that uh, we should look into all these tools, both the military, political, diplomatic, development aid uh, 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 tools, uh, to try to continue to support a peaceful um, development uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan. And I'm certain that uh, NATO allies and a lot of other countries, the international community, is ready to continue to do uh, so. And for the final question, we'll go to Nick Fiorenza from Jane's Defense.
Nick, we can't hear you. You'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think you can hear me now, right? Yes. Um, so my question was um, what your response is to what some commentators are saying that uh, the US and uh, NATO defeat in Afghanistan uh, could potentially undermine Article 5 and um, more specifically the US uh, uh, commitment to, uh, to Europe. NATO remains a strong uh, alliance, um, and uh, we have to remember that the reason we went into Afghanistan uh, was to fight international terrorism and to degrade uh, uh, Al-Qaeda. And we have degraded Al-Qaeda uh, 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 through our military mission in, in Afghanistan. Um, so uh, so uh, that's also the reason why um, allies made it clear that we are not going to stay in Afghanistan forever. That's the reason why we gradually reduced our presence uh, and back in 2014 ended our combat mission there. And, uh, and also why we uh, uh, decided 30 allies together to uh, end uh, our military presence uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, so uh, to degrade Al-Qaeda, to fight international terrorism, um, that was the main purpose. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Al-Qaeda has been degraded. Uh, not least uh, due to uh, NATO's military presence in Afghanistan over all these years. Thank you very much. This concludes this press, press point.